You guys see this, right? Guys! No. Mr. He loves you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. That's the big news. I've been really excited to tell you guys. Good morning, guys. It's Monday. I am just on my way to Ethan's to drop off some of this hay equipment. I probably should have done it yesterday, but we didn't. It was Sunday. I didn't want to bug them on a Sunday. So anyways, got some stuff going on in the barn today. I'm excited to uh, fill you guys in on it. So I hope these people show up so I can let you know. You guys see this, right? my friends is called a tether so pretty much it will just take the windrows of hay that we have right now and spread it apart so that way it will hopefully help it dry over the day and yeah that's all it really does then we have to rake it back in but we'll do this first can barely see it Oh, it smells wet. Ugh. Okay, we have been busy. Uh, Mark is raking, he's just finishing up the last, the last round, right over there, somewhere. I can't see my viewfinder. Danny is on his way, he should be here at four. It's four right now. And our manure guys are here, so it's been busy, really smelly, really, really smelly around here. Okay, let's see the damage of this hay. It looked wet from the tractor cab. Oh, it's not. It's not terrible. It's definitely not dry. I'm gonna guess like 30%, maybe. Good old Danny. His family is probably patiently waiting for him to join them on their holidays. Uh, he's got two young boys and his wife is a dear, dear friend of mine. And she is probably just shaking her head right now. Uh, typical. Wait, uh, married to a farmer and a custom guy, you're just kind of at everybody's beck and call even when it's your holidays. So Danny's doing this for me today. And the good thing about Danny's is he's got this accumulator table. So when there's five that kicks out, they just all drop together and then you're not chasing bales like here, 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 here. So Mark's just going ahead of Jess. Jess has a bale wagon. He's going to go ahead here and just stack the bales too high and then when she comes with the wagon it's just a bit easier, quicker. side of the field. They are spreading our manure. We just stopped for a drink before Danny got here and Mark said uh, I've never been so happy to just sit back and watch other people do the work in my field. Spreading manure is like the most tedious job when you uh, are just doing it yourself. They've got three guys here, two spreaders going 
They're both on fent tractors, so they go super fast. Uh, the manure is really close to where they're spreading, so uh, he loves seeing efficiencies. Um, they can do it cheaper than we can, believe it or not. It is kind of fun to watch. Dude. Come on up! Oh, poor yeah. freaking bird. Good girl. Good girl. No. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday. I've got my trailer hooked up because just like last Tuesday, I have to take a few more lambs to our local abattoir. It's been hard this year trying to get animals in. I don't do it very often, thank goodness. Um, and Justin, the guy I deal with, is very good at trying to fit me in where he can because sheep are small, so very thankful for that. So I got two in last week. I've got five here that Carissa sorted out for me yesterday while we were doing hay. And already this morning I noticed um, I have a safety chain that needed fixed and our feed cart blew a belt. So she's in the middle of feeding and she cannot keep feeding. <laughs> so. I've got Mark and Jess on getting that situated while I get these lambs to town. I know I'm not wearing my seatbelt, not on the road. Ugh. Guys! That's not good. Well, uh, that was unexpected. So they broke through this gate because my gates are garbage. So now I gotta maybe call over Chris and see if she can remember which one's which. Darn it. Okay, so the good thing about using data, it can be your friend on days like this. So we've set it all up. We're gonna run them through into the shoot area, scan their tag, and whichever ones Carissa did yesterday, I'll put a little spray mark on their bums, and they'll go ahead, and the other ones will go back into the pen. So it's not as bad as I originally thought. Okay, I think I've got the five. I painted their bums, so now we got to figure out how to get the other ones out, or put those ones in. It might be easier putting these guys in. All right, kids. Oh, no. One. Hey, guys. No, no, no. Follow. No. Sheep 101. They all got to be going the right way, because if one turns around, they all think they better turn around. Your first one better be a good leader, and typically they aren't. So that was a bit of a, <laughs> that was a bit of a race. That was a quick put the phone in your pocket because they're getting away from you. I just hope this isn't the beginning of what's going to be one of those days. This might be a bit close. I was laughing at my little metaphors of, you know, sheep being leaders. It's basically a metaphor for my life right now because uh, I'm really struggling with social media. I'm really struggling with uh, the censorship they're starting to kind of put on us without a, our permission, and B, just even our acknowledgement of it or our approval of it. And I worry about that just because my goal with this whole thing is to break out of my echo chamber, break out of just being circled with the people that have the same ideas as me and the same opinions as me. I actually like it when people have questions and, uh, you know, might not 100% agree with what I do, and then we can have a discussion about it, or I can just keep doing what I'm doing and eventually they see kind of the, the method behind the madness, so to speak. But when these platforms uh, throw on their own limitations or sensors based on what they think you wanna see, I just get a bit, uh, I get a bit frustrated. And uh, last weekend was rough for me. Like I was almost ready to walk away from it all just because I work really hard on these videos, especially YouTube. It's YouTube's the one that bothers me the most because we've been at a good place me and YouTube, we've been friends for a little bit. 
they've been better at my lambing videos they've been letting me show a lot more there which oh it means like it you guys want to see that and I wasn't able to show it um, they were demonetizing all my videos and anyway that's a long drawn out thing to say uh, YouTube decided to flag a video on Friday that was the one about goat and I was upset because uh, it was a real heartfelt video the ones that I'm really emotional on I'm they're hard to edit they didn't take it down they've just uh, they limited the ads on it which they just stopped pushing it and they changed their mind like five hours after the video was posted there's not a lot of ways to dispute it anymore because it's been reviewed by a human um, and they said it was adult content which I've got my videos all marked as being for adults actually and for education so anyway it's uh, discouraging. There are days I wish you guys knew how much I take this stuff very seriously uh, to heart. Very sensitive. Um, I'm like, are they shutting me down? Is this, is this the beginning of the end? I say I have all those thoughts all the time. Anyway, let's go home. <laughs> Hello, little lady. <laughs> How you doing? Me? How you doing? What are you guys looking at? Hmm? What are we doing over here? You guys had oodles of time to do your business. Now you're hanging out at the gate. Hello, Ed. Oh, hi. Hello. Hmm. Good boy. Hi, Marge. This is Marge's boy. He's huge. Never too far. Look at that. You are yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning you guys yes it's nine o'clock in the morning no I'm not coming to River Road to drink beer I'm actually coming to pick up some spices from my friend Nikki and Dave they actually host every weekend they have like entertainment and they have a food truck that come to their uh, brewery and Mark and I came here for a date day last Saturday because I was having a really bad day and uh, the guy here was selling sausages and he owns a spice store and they were so delicious. I said to Mark, this would taste so good in our lamb sausage. And he goes, oh, totally. So I talked to Justin yesterday who was doing my um, butchering. And I said, is it too late if I ran and got the spice that I fell in love with and see if it would work in our lamb sausage? He said, no, nope, we'll do it Thursday. So I'm here this morning picking up the spices and I have to run them back to Justin. Long story short, I really fell in love with that curry sausage. Mwah! And I get to see my Rusty and his friends Noah and Barley. If you remember, I sold my rams, three of my rams to these guys. Rusty's already a daddy. I've grabbed Nikki a latte here in Bayfield, one of my most favorite places in the world. It's actually where Mark and I got engaged, fun fact. It's a nice quiet morning and uh, after a kind of a rough start with a flooded barn, I thought this was uh, a nice little escape for an hour or so. Oh, that was 
Oh my boy. Holy crap. Hello, what rained? Hi, bud. Hello, Noah. Say hello to the people. Barley. Oh, they're not, they're not sucks at all. Is he growing some yeah. horns? Isn't that weird? What are you doing? Yeah. Hi. Oh. <laughs> How's my boy? My little superstar. Hmm? Oh, his tail. And you're a monkey. Is that right? They just go in with the horses and stuff. Wandermaster. He loves you. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> hello. I am home after <laughs> quite the road trip. I just wanted to show you some cool stuff that uh, River Road is doing. I love this microbrewing industry. I just think it's it just it's so intriguing and they're such entrepreneurs anyway they've done a bunch of relabeling and look at what they put let me find the actual beer can here so this is our favorite river road beer called zesty farmer it's a pale ale and look who's <laughs> beautiful rusty's drinking beer and they're actually cutting the grass ironic that's my kind of humor and this one Thanks a latte. And he's the barista. But this is the one I wanted to talk to you about. So mental health is a big issue in everybody's industry. We're all trying to do our part somehow. So some of the microbreweries, um, River Road is one of them. And I think they said it was worldwide are starting this. Uh, they're brewing their own, I think it's their own mix, obviously. And it's called Things We Do Not Say. Things We Don't Say? Things We Don't Say. Things We Don't Say. And the label's just empty. And I think proceeds from these go to mental health awareness. So I thought that was amazing. And it's just nice to see everybody's taking it seriously. Anyway, that was a good morning. Uh, Justin's going to see what he can do with that spice. It made me really hungry and it's lunchtime. We are all dried up, which is good. Very good, very good. All this week we've been working on something. And... Uh, I haven't shown you guys yet, but I'm pretty excited. This is kind of a grand reveal. It's not the grand grand reveal because it's only part one of part two. You guys have followed me for a few years now. Ventilation is something that I didn't know enough about when I built this barn. Uh, it is uh, naturally ventilated, which means I have chimneys and I have these big curtains. So for the most part on a nice breezy day, not a problem, but a day like today feels like an inferno. I'm not going to lie. It is Hot. My boys just literally stand around the fan like it's a water cooler. It's hot, eh, boys? Hot dogs. I've done a lot of research. I've talked to a lot of farmers. And recently I talked to uh, definitely one farmer that has an identical barn to mine. And he said I went with the big, the big fans. I really likes them because he runs them in reverse in the winter. And that helps with the, what is it, stratification. So it helps get that moisture off the ceiling. Cause my problem is it freezes in the winter and then as soon as it gets above zero, it all, it all drops from the ceiling and it makes my pack really wet. And then, then you can come into health issues. So this barn stays really, really good when, it's, when it stays really cold. But when they're swinging, when the temperatures swing, I have issues with moisture. It's just something we have never been able to justify the price. They're, they're expensive, but I've been able to save up for the last couple of years. And I bought uh, a couple months ago, I've ordered uh, three big fans and new curtains. So they are already up. I'm very excited. Uh, so the difference between these curtains and my old curtains, these are kind of new and improved. Uh, it comes with a weather station, so there's going to be like a, a rain and wind sensor that's going to be put at the very top of my barn, so it is r wide open to the environment. So whenever it rains or whenever there's really high winds with the rain, the uh, sensors will make those curtains open and close. The beauty of these curtains is they have a bar in the middle, and so in the winter that bar in the middle will be my new kind of limit so then the only thing that will open is the that top portion uh, and then i don't have to worry about these rollers getting broke in the winter because of snow loads so i'm hoping this is the answer to my troubles 
It's a huge investment. It took me a long time to decide. You can talk to the sales guys that were here that probably hate my guts right now. But honestly, I talked to farmers and they're the ones that pointed me into this direction. And I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna regret it. Uh, it's gonna be better than what it is now, which is nothing. That's the big news. I've been really excited to tell you guys and, and have been waiting for it to start. The fans aren't gonna show up for a couple weeks yet. Um, they're stuck in Texas waiting for likely a chip like everything else in the world. So this is a new actuator. We're actually gonna put this up a bit. This guy is the middle bar here, this wrap. So in the winter, that would be like up here somewhere. All new strings, new cables. I think we reuse we reused our pipes, which is good. It saves a little bit of money. But yeah, they did this. They did this on that really hot Monday and then finished the other side uh, yesterday. I went to town for the third time today to replace my hook on my safety chain and I'm praying this is the right one. I have no idea how this came off even but easy enough. There. Chain. Crisscross applesauce. Beauty. All right. Let's load up some lambs. All right kids. Uh. Uh, Who's in your wall? Where'd your wall go? Uh, Come in. Uh, That's it. That's it. Uh, That's it. Yep, 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 yep. You grab that. Come on. Nope. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. We have a storm coming and none of this is hooked up. So Jack is gonna, we're gonna use a drill and close this manually. We're gonna close it about three quarters. It's too hot to shut out of the way and it'll be too rainy to have wide open. This is the dilemma. It's probably good, Jack. Just in time. Look at that. Can you see the tan line? Dirt line. Here she comes. <laughs>